Our news team, we thank you for making CBS2 your choice for news. I'm Tracy Townsend. The news at 5 starts right now. Now, the news on CBS2. I saw you from my He said, I will do to him like what he did to me and worse. More than that. He lives in Chicago now, but a former citizen of Iraq who was tortured by Saddam Hussein's regime says he will never forget the horror and the pain. His ear was cut off, and he wants revenge. Salih al Musawi now fears for the safety of prisoners of war being held by the Iraqi dictator. And the frightened faces of some of the captured soldiers bring back nightmarish memories of his own imprisonment. CBS 2's Kyung Law joins us now with the story. Kyung. Well, Antonio and Tracy Saleh al Musawi now lives in Chicago under political asylum. He was tortured in Iraq as a prisoner forced into the Iraqi army, but was able to flee the country on foot several years ago. He fears for the Americans now held by Saddam's regime. <laughs> Salih Al Musawi watches Al Jazeera war coverage closely, praying for Saddam Hussein's downfall. He said, "I wish I will had him for one day to show him what he did to my to my life." Speaking through an interpreter, Al Musawi says Hussein's forces cut off his right ear. In the first Gulf War, Al Musawi refused to join Hussein's army. Hussein put a $3,000 bounty on his capture, and after running for three years, he was caught and turned into a prisoner. Al Musawi was tortured and with 700 other men in his hometown of Basra, Iraq, made an example of. Soldiers cut off his ear. The unlucky had their tongues slashed out. What he did, not just to me, he did to a lot of Iraqi people. I'm one of these Iraqi people being, you know, suffering. What's your name? Shana. Al Musawi fears the captured Americans will be tortured. He has no mercy to his people. What do you think about the American uh, soldier going over there? Do you think he's going to, you know, treat them well? He's not. He will treat them badly, 100%. But Al Musawi says the soldiers' lives, and even the lives of his own mother and five siblings still in Iraq, are worth putting on the line for the safety of the free world. Yeah, he said it's, it's worth it to get rid of him and make the people live in good life. And Al Musawi says beyond the 700 men he personally saw tortured, he knows of many women who were raped by Saddam's people. To the parents of the POWs, he prays they will be safe and return home soon. It's an awful story. Awful story. Thanks, Kim. That man's story and other reports of Saddam's atrocities raise great concerns tonight over how the Iraqis will treat American prisoners of war. The families of five American soldiers now held captive in Iraq are keeping a tense vigil. This video of one of the POWs, Army Specialist Shoshana Johnson, was shot by Iraqi TV. She comes from an Army family, but nothing, of course, could really prepare her for this ordeal. As a member of a support unit, she did not receive the intensive survival training given to pilots or special operations troops. One person who knows the horrors of captivity firsthand is retired Major Joseph Small of Milwaukee. He was held by the Iraqis during the Gulf War and told TV interviewers last night it was nine days of hell. Just uh, the first couple of days were fairly intense beatings, um, whippings, and all this time I was tied up and, and blindfolded. Uh, they, they knew how to extract a, d a degree of pain uh, that I hadn't ever felt before. Uh, but I think the worst thing was the, the emotional toll, uh, knowing that at, from point to point to minute to minute, I knew that I was alive and okay and I knew that my family didn't know. Major Small served in the Marine Corps. He was held captive in 1991. Tonight, more Americans may be prisoners of war. Iraqi TV is showing pictures of two men it says are downed American helicopter pilots. General Tommy Franks of U.S. Central Command had confirmed earlier that two pilots were missing in action. Also tonight, the Pentagon says Allied forces are taking aim at Saddam Hussein's Republican Guard forces near Baghdad. In response, Iraqis are piling sandbags around government buildings and other strategic locations in Baghdad, and Allied ground forces continue their march toward the Iraqi capital. CBS 2's Jay Levine is with them, and at this hour, he and members of the 101st Airborne Division are stopped at a refueling base within striking distance of Baghdad. Jay joins us live via satellite phone with the latest. And Jay, we were saying that you were within striking distance. Can you tell us what it was like getting to that point? Uh, well, it was four full days, Tracy, four days of going through the desert. Uh, these weren't roads. This was like driving a uh, two-ton truck 
down Oak Street Beach and trying to get up the North Shore by the beach rather than Lakeshore Drive. Uh, that was most of the trip. Believe me, we averaged about two miles an hour through four days as we made it 200 some odd miles from Northern to our area, which, we, which we'll describe as within striking distance of Baghdad. Uh, throughout the way, we would stop for refueling, uh, stop to, uh, to, for breaks of, uh, of a couple of hours or so, but kept moving all the time. It's very hot during the day. It's very, very cold at night. I was wearing three jackets to try and stay warm, the troops as well. Obviously, there was no heat other than the heaters of our trucks. And it was tough to use that, especially while we're driving, because everybody was so fatigued, switching off driving from person to person, that uh, you were afraid to fall asleep. So it was paradise, not exactly. What you have is another desert, absolutely barren, nothing. I think we're having apparent problems yeah. there with the signal. Yeah, we've unfortunately lost that signal with Jay, but uh, we will uh, talk to Jay again at 10 o'clock tonight and get the latest from Iraq. Uh, you would think that at a time when Iraq and the United States are at war, that there might be tensions between two neighbors, one Iraqi, one American. But for a Naperville mother with a son in the service in the Gulf, she has found solace in her Iraqi neighbor. CBS 2's Suzanne Lamigno joins us now from the newsroom with her story. Suzanne. Antonio, Susan Blake says while bombs were dropping on her neighbor's homeland, they both sat saying Christian and Muslim prayers together, asking their gods to protect her son and her neighbor's family. Susan's neighbor didn't want to go on camera today because of her position on her homeland. She feels Iraq would be a better place with, Hussam, with Saddam Hussein not in power. At times, Susan Blake says the uncertainty facing her son is unbearable. I don't think any of us know for sure where our kids are. We know they're there. That's it. There's no good job. There's no safe place. It doesn't much matter. It's all one big sandbox and hill. Susan's son, Private First Class Garrett Blake, does support for the Apache attack helicopters in the 101st Airborne. The Naperville mother spearheaded a yellow ribbon campaign in her community. It's a non-political statement. It just means we love you. Come home. We support you. Susan also started a support group for families with loved ones in the service. She said a source of comfort came from what many would think of as an unlikely source, her Iraqi neighbor. There is no right and wrong uh, where the two of us are concerned. She's praying for my son. I'm praying for her family. Susan said her neighbor has family in Baghdad, the same place her son's unit is bombarding. She's so filled with hope that there will be a new Iraq, that there will be an Iraq where she can go visit her sister's family, where they can come visit us. Um, she's so filled with hope that it, it really helps. Since Susan Blake started her yellow ribbon campaign, she says local stores have actually been running out of small yellow ribbon, so she improvised. She now uses plastic yellow tablecloths like this, and she cuts them into bows. Now, basically, she's also saying that the ribbons in front of her home will be taken down by her son when he returns. In the newsroom, I'm Suzanne Lemigno, CBS 2 News. Thank you, Suzanne. A top Illinois official has kicked off a community outreach program to treasure our troops as they go to war. State Treasurer Judy Bartopinka announced the project. It is aimed at raising awareness and money for the USO which has helped servicemen and women and their families since 1941. There's guard and reserve and, and regular military families uh, trying to hold things together. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a hard job for them. There's just as much of a home front effort as there is out there in the battlefield. USO services in the Chicago area are located at O'Hare and Midway airports, Navy Pier, and the Great Lakes Naval Training Center. The war in Iraq is causing many people to change their air travel plans. Next, we'll tell you what to expect if you're rebooking or if you're trying to make new reservations in the next few weeks. I'm Marianne Childers. There could be a simple way to make some heart procedures, such as angioplasty, a lot safer for some patients. I'll have details coming up in Medicine Today. And we've had the best of springtime weather today, but there are a few changes coming tonight. I'll tell you about those in just a few minutes. You're watching the news on CBS 2 with Antonio Mora, Tracy Townsend, Steve Baskerville with weather, and Mike Adamley on sports. This is CBS 2 News at 5. October 1991. 
Operation Desert Storm, and CBS 2's Jay Levine was there. Now, 12 years later, with America at war again, Jay is back on the front lines, bringing you updates on our local soldiers. Then, for the very latest on the home front, CBS 2's Mike Flannery reports from Washington. As events unfold in the Middle East, Jay Levine and Mike Flannery bring the story home. Only on CBS 2 News. The next few days will be critical in the ground campaign for Allied forces. CBS 2's Jim Tillman is here now to take a look at the challenging weather extremes that are in the forecast for Iraq. And Jim, when we talked to Jay Levine at 4.30, he told us that it was really cold last night, that they were really having a rough time with that. Yes, indeed. It's typical desert weather, in fact, because you can get very hot in the day, and as soon as that sun goes down, the icebox comes back again. And they have a lot of wind going on that's picking up right now. It'll continue to increase to about 15 to 30 miles an hour. Now, our experience shows that about 20 miles an hour of wind is all it takes to get a sandstorm, and you're going to expect to see sandstorms across all of Iraq. You're going to see 86 degrees for tomorrow across the southern edge around Kuwait, and 84 degrees around Baghdad, but they do have a front moving through, and that front's going to not only cool things off even more, but it might bring them a rain shower or even a thunderstorm for tomorrow. And by tomorrow night, you can anticipate seeing temperatures in the mid-40s. That's why it's getting so cold. That gives you some indication about how much of a drastic change takes place, about 40 degrees sweep in temperatures throughout the day and tonight. But it looks like that once that front mo moves through, it get, could, could get out of there by Wednesday or so, then things should improve a little bit, and we're looking forward to that. All Back right. to you. Thank you, Jim. Flight attendants in Chicago are asking the public to help beef up, help beef up security. Members of the Association of Flight Attendants passed out leaflets and solicited signatures today at O'Hare. It's for their petition seeking federal assistance to help with increased security costs since 9-11. As the U.S. moves forward with its mission in Iraq, the fear here at home has some people canceling or rebooking their travel plans. It's just another hit for an already struggling industry. CBS 2's Jim Williams takes a look at the travel slump. At Aquaterra Travel, it was not a typical Monday morning. But normally the phones are ringing. And today? It's been quiet, very quiet. For travel agencies like this one, it's been one blow after another. September 11th, the bad economy, now war. I think most travel agents feel like Job at this point. We just keep trying and things keep, you know, going in different directions. Since the conflict with Iraq started, business here is down 70%. We have found here at Aquaterra that the individuals always during any kind of conflict just sort of want to get out of traveling right now, but it doesn't mean they don't want to ever travel. In fact, some people are postponing travel to when they think the war will be over. In meeting that demand, United Airlines today announced its passengers can now rebook any ticket if it's done before May 18th. But there's a catch. We bought a Super Saver fare for $158, and the fare to Fort Lauderdale is now $200. You're going to have to pay that fare difference, but you're not going to have to pay the change fee penalty. The unfortunate irony for travel agents is that with the cancellations and the postponements, they end up doing a lot more work without gaining additional income. Meantime, for those willing to travel now, there are plenty of bargains. Jim Williams, CBS 2 News. Travel agents say they have not seen many spring break cancellations because they say most of that travel is done in the United States and in Mexico where travel fears are not as high. Stay with CBS 2 and CBS News for continuing coverage of America at War. You can get up to the minute news from Iraq on our sister station, News Radio 780 WBBM AM. And coming up at 5.30, an expanded one-hour edition of the CBS Evening News with Dan Rather. Then, tonight at 10, Jay Levine reports from Iraq as ground forces continue their advance toward Baghdad. A warning about the prolonged use of steroids. That's next in Medicine Today. And putting depression treatments to the test. What's more effective, herbal remedies or prescription drugs? Now, here's Mike Adamley. Since the butler did it, they will wear the Cinderella label as the NCAA tournament advances to the Sweet 16. And the Bears' new quarterback, Cordell Stewart, officially begins off-season workouts. Those stories later in sports. In the culinary arts, having a creative edge means you respect tradition and savor artistry. Your work is your life's passion. Your technique is classic. Your touch is remembered. Stand out. Get an education in the culinary arts at the Illinois Institute of Art. 
1-800-395-1648. That's 1-800-395-1648. Get an edge here. In medicine today, we may soon know just how effective St. John's wort is at treating depression. But first, a way to make artery clearing procedures much safer. CBS 2's medical editor, Marianne Shoulders, is here with details. This is a case where we found a new use for some very commonly used drugs. They're called statins, and they're very effective at lowering cholesterol levels. But now new research shows that they can reduce the risk of heart attacks and even death if they're given to patients first, before artery clearing procedures such as angioplasty. Now this study in the journal circulation of the American Heart Association says patients given statins also had better outcomes one year after those procedures. Hey, cranberry juice lovers, here's some good news for you. A new study says that drinking three glasses a day could be very good for your heart. The juice seems to significantly raise levels of good cholesterol as well as antioxidant levels in the blood plasma. That's two things that can reduce the risk of heart disease by up to 40 percent. The research presented at the American Chemical Society meeting in New Orleans used drinks that contain 27 percent pure cranberry juice. That's just like the common supermarket variety. This first long-term study in humans was funded by the Cranberry Institute. While we're talking about risk, uh, a warning today about the long-term use of steroids. Scientists at the University of Edinburgh say people who take high doses of anti-inflammatory steroids for treatment of conditions such as arthritis and asthma are up to three times more likely to develop heart diseases than those who never take the drugs. Now, an important note, these were high oral doses, the kind you take in pill form, not inhaled steroids for asthma. And finally, we may soon know a lot more about how and if St. John's Wort fights depression. The National Institutes of Health is starting a four-year study that will see just how well the herbal remedy stacks up against certain prescription drugs when it comes to fighting depression. 300 patients are going to be enlisted to take uh, either a prescription drug, the St. John's Wort, or a placebo and we'll keep you posted and, and you know one note sometimes when you hear that like the cranberry institute has funded a study you tend mm -hmm. to say oh yeah well it's in their interest <laughs> well you know that's true but in this day and age if if manufacturers and food processors etc cetera, etc cetera, didn't fund some of these studies they would never be never done do because yeah. there just simply isn't the money available for the, the amount of research that needs right. to be done so we have to look at them you know a little bit differently and who was conducting the study as well right. mm -hmm. okay thanks Marianne. Mm -hmm. Glorious, phenomenal, sensational, oh, Thanks, terrific. Steve. Anything else we can come up with? <laughs> Please don't stop. More, more, more. And we're not talking about you. Right. <laughs> well, anyway, it's, it's a wonderful day out there. And uh, you talk about picking your mood up. If you step outside for just a few moments, you'll feel the difference in terms of real spring and all the good parts of it. As we take a look at the radar, even the rain is holding off for a while. It will stay away for another uh, several hours or so until about 9 or 10 o'clock tonight as Live Doppler 2 makes it sweep out over the lake. We can't find any trouble that we need to worry about. It's farther north and west of the Chicago area right now. But what just can you expect over the next 24 hours or so? First thing, the showers are likely after sunset and then more than likely overnight tonight. Temperatures will drop because of the front that's headed in this direction and Unfortunately, it means cooler weather all week. However, cooler than it is today, but still above what is normal for this time of year. What is normal is a dramatic change from what we have outside today. It should only be 49 degrees at its warmest. We got up to 74 degrees. Could have tied a record. Goes back to 1939 with five more degrees, but we won't set or tie a record. Five degrees is the cold record. Goes back to 1974. We don't have to worry about that for a while. At the moment, I don't know here, 71 degrees. West winds are blowing at 12 miles an hour. The heat feels good. There's not high humidity, but look at that line that's lining up north of Des Moines, and the same line extends through Wisconsin out over the lake. That's what we're waiting for to move in this direction, and as the front arrives after midnight, more than likely behind it will have the rainy weather, so the first part of tomorrow is going to be soggy, and then we've got some hope for clearing skies later on tomorrow afternoon. So it'll be uh, one, the rain, and then the second uh, phenomenon will be the clearing sky later in the day. And take a look for yourself. I hate to hide this, but not a big storm, but Saturday we've got cold enough weather to give you snow symbols again on the map. And we're talking the end of March and the first of April or so. 57 degrees tomorrow, 54 on Wednesday, in the 50s for Thursday and Friday, and it being typical Chicago-like weather around here. What's the end of March and the beginning of April <laughs> without just a little bit of snow, right? And 38 degrees, that's on the far end of the five day. That could change, but that's something that we'll keep you posted on. Another big storm moving in this direction. Oh boy, something not to look forward to. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, well, we are looking forward to the start of football season. Can't
prepare too early. And if he does as well as everybody hopes he will, they mm -hmm. could call Hallis Hall the House of Stewart. <laughs> the NFL draft is still a month away, but Bears veterans are already working out. Off-season training kicked off this morning, and it included the Bears' newest acquisition. CBS 2's Chris Bowden has the story. Ten days after his formal introduction, Cordell Stewart was back at Hallis Hall, still high over his new home and new teammates. I'm feeling as wanted as it seems uh, coming in and the way everybody's talking, man, it's, you know, a lot of, a lot of chills running through the body, so it's, it's, it's very exciting so far. I think the longer I'm here, the more exciting it'll become, and right now we're just pretty much going through all the film work and trying to figure some things out so the brain is kind of running all over the place. And it seems like he's been around here forever. I mean, he's in there joking with guys, laughing, talking with everyone, and, uh, you know, it's good to have that presence in the locker room. With Rosie Colvin departed, Alex Brown will be counted on to step up on the pass rush, knowing this offseason work sets the table for what results he'll get. I got to work my butt off now, so this is this is where I win it at right here. Mm. This right here is going to determine, like, how many sacks I'm going to get and, all that stuff. Big Cat Williams is also gone, making Chris Valerio the longest tenured bear, but one with a renewed purpose as these workouts begin. We had high expectations for ourselves, and and we we didn't we didn't show up last year, and uh, it's disappointing for us and the coaches and the fans, and I think we have a lot to prove this year. There are certainly holes and rolls on this roster that still need filling, but the veterans who were around two years ago seem anxious to take every step necessary to avoid a repeat of last fall's fall. In Lake Forest, Chris Bowden, CBS 2 News. Meanwhile, Jimbo Covert has been voted into College Football Hall of Fame. The ex-Bear is among 11 former players and coaches selected. In college basketball, the Butler Bulldogs are this year's Cinderella team in the NCAA tourney. Darnell Archie, who could forget this performance? Eight of nine three-pointers for 26 corner. points to lead the Bulldogs past Louisville. He says they are thrilled and excited, but not satisfied because their goal is to win the national championship. They face top-seeded Oklahoma Friday night. The Bulls beaten again on the road against Detroit last night or off until Wednesday when they entertain the Miami Heat at the United Center. The Blackhawks get back into action tomorrow night at the UC when they face the New York Islanders. 21-year-old goalie Craig Anderson came up big yesterday, limiting the Penguins to one goal and 1-1 tie at the UC. It was huge because Anderson had given up four goals in a five-minute span Saturday at Colorado when the Blackhawks were uh, slaughtered 8-1 to one to the Avalanche. But the Barrington native was a new man yesterday in his hometown debut. It's uh, been a dream come true ever since I've been a kid. You know, listening to the roars of the uh, national anthem, it was nice to be on the ice and uh, actually hear, you know, for myself. A little extra butterflies coming out here today? No, not so much. Uh, you know, played a couple games. I don't think, uh, you know, after that Del or the uh, Colorado game, I had much to lose coming on the night. I uh, just wanted to come out and do my best. And, you know, don't really put any undue pressure on myself. 21, he looks 16. In baseball, the Arizona Diamondbacks have given their pitcher, Randy Johnson, a two-year contract extension through 2005 that will pay him $33 million. And in Tucson, the White Sox jumping on the Rockies early. Frank Thomas looping this single to shallow right field. That scored two runs, but those were the only Sox runs of the afternoon. Colorado came back to win 4-2. The Cubs beat the Brewers 5 to 2. All right. Thank $33 you, Mike. million dollars for a guy who pitches every five days. Nice work. You can get it. Basically, yeah. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> this portion of the news on CBS 2 is brought to you by GMC. Have you seen this ad from Voices for Choices attacking SBC Illinois? Well, you should know it's actually funded by AT&T and MCI WorldCom. AT&T and MCI hope to derail a change in state law. Why? Because under current rules, they can lease local phone lines in Illinois for half the average they pay in other states and pocket the difference without passing it on to you. And they have the same sweet deal on lines for high-speed Internet. So next time you see this ad, remember who's behind it. Tonight, people of all faiths are gathering in a Chicago church for a prayer service. Local religious leaders organized the event at St. James Cathedral. CBS 2's John Davis is live on the city's near north side where they are praying for peace. John. Well, Tracy, we've just seen a few people trickle into the church. Organizers say they hope before the night is over that they will have a much larger crowd here. But the Council of Religious Leaders of Chicago called for this ecumenical and interfaith prayer service to simply and collectively pray for peace. Organizers say the tensions of the time during this time of war make it imperative that religious leaders demonstrate together how important prayer is. To that end, these leaders of Judaism, Muslim, Eastern Orthodox, Protestants, and Catholics are expected here tonight 
Their common ground, of course, are their traditions of each in their religions, which also say a lot about peace, that according to Reverend Ralph Blackman. I think today is a time to come and, and to realize that whenever one has to choose the option of war, it's a, a choice between the immoral and the less moral, and, and it's a broken place in humanity. And, and of course, even after tonight's uh, ecumenical prayer service is over, organizers say they will be encouraging their followers to pray for peace every single day as long as this war is going on. Live outside of St. James Cathedral, John Davis, CBS 2 News. Thank you, John, and that's the news at 5. I'm Antonio Mora. And I'm Tracy Townsend. Thanks for making us your choice for news. We'll see you again at 10. Have a good evening.